All right. So basically, Snatcher. Now I first knew about Snatcher from a video that that is about censorship related stuff. And I don't even know why did I ever got into it. But that was pretty much my very first um, interaction with the game. But then later on after that, I have decided to try it out after seeing a battle reports about it. You know, trying the Mega CD version, or the Sega CD, as anyone would want to call it. And I'm telling you, it's a really, really, it was a very unexpected type of game that I've ever got and played, you know. Like downloading that Sega CD version, didn't even know that I'm going to be discovering such a crazy game made by Konami has a bit of a relation to the Metal Gear Solid series, or later on. And boy, isn't it a crazy, great experience. Like, the music, the voice acting, maybe a bit cringy and a bit off-putting to today's timelines, but... or today's standards. However, uh, I think it was pretty good. Not only that, but the game and the gameplay might be so bad. However, the story, the music, the graphics, the backgrounds, you know, and everything is just that good, you know, really good. The many plot twists with the cutscenes and the music, especially most of the unreleased versions on the internet about the OST. And let me tell you, boy, isn't it such a goddamn great looking game. And it, and it was one of Hideo Kojima's best works, even though he was not involved in it, which is a shame. However, you could see his name on the opening credits of the game. And the plot is quite simple. In 1996, at the Sega CD version's time, basically, a crazy ass chemical gas named Lucifer Alpha and has been released to the freaking atmosphere at Moscow, killing 80% of the population. Because of an explosion that was done by a certain someone inside the Chernotun Research Alpha building. But then later on, because of that explosion, mysterious biroids come out. And those mysterious biroids are simply robots that kill people, take their original, take the original dead people's bodies and minds and whatsoever, and they become the ones that they have originally killed. Not only that, but they can be as human as possible using artificial skin. And because they take over people's minds and bodies, from those who they kill, there was simp thus came the name Snatchers. The protagonist, simply called Gillian C, 31 years old, a widow who have been separated from his wife, Jamie C, and they, because they both have a freaking amnesia from a goddamn cold sleep. That was also done by a certain someone. And to even regain their memories, he joins Junker headquarters. Basically an agency that deals with all types of snatcher problems. Not only that, but 
She's a one hell of a womanizer. And he investigates around New Kobe along with our little navigator robot, Metal Gear Mark II. Not the Metal Gear that we fought on two MSX games and a whole disc 32 bit related disc. <laughs> but a cutesy little robot who is helping you in the shape of a Metal Gear. Like, ain't that one hell of a reference? Oh, and by the way, Snatcher is half Blade Runner. Like, yo. And then, and then comes all the plot twists and all the stuff. And, like I said, this game was unexpected. In fact, it's even mind blowing in its time. Really. It was pretty much way ahead of its time. From the options that you have, the investigative stuff that you could do, all of the routes you could ever get into, and um, the voice acting, along with the music, and. Like, when I even finished the game on, like, a third day or something? Holy shit. Like, really, holy shit. The game was just that perfect. And to even deepen up the love for it, I decided to discover some of the other ports. Starting with the MSX2 port. And boy, isn't it a huge downgrade. Like really, first it's a type-based adventure game. And most of the stuff that you used to do on your Sega CD port is even harder on the MSX. And, but then, if there is one thing that you could ever love about the MSX2 port, the SCC Konami sound chip. Basically a sound chip that makes you listen to some great, great banging music while having a PSG uh, stuck inside the freaking MSX. Like I'm telling you, I've been way too deep into this whole, this whole game. And later on, Decided to try the PCN, to try, I mean, the PS1. Then later on onto the P PC Engine's pilot disc. And after a few days, went on to the PC Engine full version. And sometimes I would, would try to even emulate the PC88 version. AKA the very first version that was ever released for Snatcher. Like, I'm telling you, that game had literally snatched my brain and my heart. This was just that amazing. It may be old, like really old. However, it's really golden. A real golden work by Hideo Kojima himself. And I'm gonna be truly honest, the game is such a fucking masterpiece. It even fit, like the disclaimer at the very beginning of the game when you start it up, when it says the story is dedicated to all the cyberpunks who fight the corruption every day in their lives. And I'm telling you, I used to be a cyberpunker myself. <sighs> you know, times have changed. And I'm gonna be truly honest. Snatcher is a whole iconic piece of art. And I really hope... I really hope that it gets a remake or something. But of course we never got that kind of thing. Instead, 
for more loft as a game, we've got a PC Engine Mini that contains the PC Engine version of Snapper. And then way longer ago, there used to be an RPG Super Deformed version of Snatcher on the MSX2 as well. And holy shit. The entire game has been flipped and mixed. Uh, if I would give Snatcher an honest rating, I would say I would give it about. 9.5 out of 10. Actually, 10 out of 10. A real solid 10 out of 10. And if I could even give it more, I would have even given it, because, like I said, it was very fucking amazing. That was my review about Snatcher in a nutshell.